Okay, well, this is what I was heading for. Um, this is the goal that I had in mind for this um, Intel 80 slash 20 4 um, was to install a ROM, a ROMable monitor, actually. Um, so it's a, it, the, the original Intel came with its own monitor, um, but uh, I knew somebody um in the way back days i've told the story before he was working for the navy and he had written a monitor that was just to kill for um and he gave me a copy of it and so um i have modified that a uh, monitor before to have it run on an msi uh, cpm installation so i had to change the uh, memory mapping and i had to change all of the uh, io calls to bdos calls so i'd done that in the past uh, and then recently I've modified it to run on a Zeta Z80. I've got some uh, videos on that. Um, and so here I am finally with what the board was actually, or what the program was actually intended for. This is actually the target board um, when the guy wrote it. And so um, it is um, a like I said, ROMable, so it all fits into ROM and executes out of ROM. So all the, everything that needs to be flexible has to be in RAM. So it's, it's, it's written that way. Um, and so let's take a, let's take a quick, quick look at it here. Um, so there's four ROMs in the board. Um, and this is a 4K program. So we're going to have to use two of the ROMs. So it's going to, live in address space zero to FFF. Um, so we'll need to burn uh, two ROMs and I'll show you how you burn two ROMs um, using Intel hex format. Um, so changes to the program. I had to change the uh, location of RAM. Uh, so BFFFF is the top of RAM. Uh, it's gonna live at zero because it's ROMable. Um, other things I had to change was the ports where it all lives. So all of this here is my code um, for where the 8251 lives, the 8253. Um, this is all his code. Um, I had to add all the initialization stuff. So I had to add all of this stuff which initializes the 8253, which is the baud rate generator, and then uh, also um, starts up the UART, the 8251. Um, let's see, what else did I have to change? I don't think I had to change much anywhere. Um, let's see, until the very end, let's, let's go to the end. Uh, there were some I.O. stuff at the end. Let's see, display, restart, monitor I.O. routine. So um, I needed to change uh, this, which is the um, character in. And so I inserted my character in routine here. Uh, I had to change the polling which checks for the status ready. I, so I inserted this. And then I also needed to change the um, character out, um, which is below here somewhere here. So I had to change this. Um, and I believe that was it. Everything else was as before. All right, so um, let's see. So this was um, assembled. So I guess I can show that. So let's go ahead and go there. Okay, so to assemble it, I say TSAM, that's uh, 85. Uh, the program is called 8080. And then I do 8080.hex, and that's it. That's all you have to do. So it will assemble it, it will create a listing file, and it will also create a hex file. All right. So once you have the hex file, then you need to go to the prom programmer. So let me show you that. All right. So to load um, the program, uh, first of all, you put in the device that you're going to program it to. So this is an 80. I mean, a, a 2816, so this is my uh, EEPROM. EE so you go to the hex file, 
double click it, say OK. And it'll say out of address for the device. Oh my goodness, what's that mean? Well, it means that the hex file is longer than the device will hold. So if we just scroll down here, see this device only goes to 7FFF, um, which is only 2K worth. So only 2K of the hex file was loaded, but that's okay. Go ahead and burn this one and call it ROM1. So this is gonna go into address, uh, into the ROM location 0000. 000, 000. And uh, this will be the very first, um, the very first part. So here's a F3, which is disable interrupts. A C3, so it's going to say jump to 00F59. So, so the code is all in here. Um, so you burn this one first. Now the trick is burning the second one. So burning the second one, we need to burn the second one um, in address space 800 to FFF. Um, so to do that, once again, click on the hex file. And here it says from start address to buffer address. So right here, we're going to say 800. And we're going to say OK. So poof. Now the very first thing here, even though it says address 0, this is actually what we want to be at 800. Um, and if we scroll here, you'll see a bunch of ASCII things at the uh, at the end of it. So we know that we've got it. So this is ROM number two. So you go ahead and burn this one, and this is ROM number two. So now you stick in ROM number one, ROM number two, both in the board, and power it up. So let's take a look at that. All right, um, let's see here. Let's power this thing on. 8080 system monitor. And then we can do things like um, uh, test, Oh, everything has to be upper upper case. So I'm going to hit caps lock. I hit T. It says test. Let's do uh, B000 to B100. OK, yes. Test OK. So we've tested the RAM from B0 to B1. Um, that's pretty cool. We can do things like uh, dump. So you just have to hit one key, and it fills it all in. So D. H, dump hex. Let's dump hex from 0000 to 0FFFF. And here's our program. So it does a, a hex dump and a, a ASCII dump on the side. I actually modified the program to do the ASCII dump on the side. That wasn't originally in his code, um, but I find it very useful to have it over there. And you can see here at the end, it'll start showing some ASCII data. There it is. Uh, here's our uh, 8080 system monitor. So these are the things that it types, um, all the ASCII it needs to type with. So there we go. Um, there are a bunch of things you can do. So you can do things like, instead of dump hex, you can say dump symbolic, uh, 000 to let's say 0100. So this is actually printing, it's a disassembler. It's actually printing out stuff. So we can see here, here here's our um, disable interrupts, jump to 59. If we go here down to 59, uh, we're going to put B6 into A. We're going to output it to DF. So this is uh, getting our um, 8253 up and running. Uh, here's our um, divisor of 7 to give us a 16 times 9600 baud rate. So uh, yeah, it's very cool. So you can do disassembly. You can actually do assembly as well. Um, it's uh, got lots of things built in. Um, let's see. I don't remember exactly all what it does, but it's uh, uh, it does what it needs to do <laughs> for a for a monitor program. It's quite it's quite good. Um, I think I actually explained when I uh, in my video when I run this program on the on the um, Zeta. Uh, Z80 board. I think I actually go through everything that it uh, everything that it does. Um, but anyway, I'm very pleased. Um, I've I've uh, resurrected an Intel uh, 80 slash 20. Um, I got it to work, and then I broke it, and I got it to work again. Um, I built a power supply for it. Uh, built some I/O for it. And uh, now I have it actually running a program. So this is uh, 
uh, this is great. And it's about all this board really does. Um, the board was really made to be a controller. Um, so uh, the program that I kind of showed you where I pushed switches and had LEDs light up, that's kind of what this board was meant to do, uh, to, to, to do some type of industrial control. Um, the little monitor programs like this are just for like debugging reasons. Like I could I could go in and take a look at memory, or I could take a look at uh, parallel uh, um, uh, I/O ports and things like that to uh, troubleshoot the thing. Um, but mostly the the monitor program was just for troubleshooting and not for program development. Uh, that was done just like you saw me um, actually write programs and and compile them and put them into ROM. So um, the board was really more a uh, replacement for what we today would call a microcontroller. Those didn't exist back then, so you had to do a, an entire board uh, to actually do the microcontroller. So anyway, uh, completed, completed my task and very pleased.